Good morning, everyone. As you saw in the intro, spring is upon us. Things are starting to bloom. I uh, finally uh, was able to go ahead and build a fire pit in the backyard, which I'm going to start outdoor cooking on very shortly. Uh, made a tripod so that I can hang my Dutch oven on. And I'm just all um, excited about using this cast iron cookware. So um, as I showed you, I've got my Dutch oven here. I've got some smaller cast iron pans. Um, these don't have a number on them. These are basically the ones that were called um, salesman samples or such. You can cook um, one, one egg on them or make your Egg McMuffin sandwiches. Got my cornbread or bread pan or other type of baking pan. Got my skillet all ready to go. Got this skillet all ready to go. Got my sand, oops, got my searing pan all ready to go. I did one last seasoning on these. Um, what I did was I put some oil in it and then I baked them for an hour at 350 degrees, let them cool. They're not sticky, they're very nice. They took a good seasoning um, and they're ready to go. So what I'm doing today is while my big pan, which I'll show you in a bit, is seasoning in the oven. Now that big pan, we can use it for cooking turkeys as long as it's in a bag because um, I just worry about the splatter. It is deep enough. I'll show that to you. It'll be good for making pizza. It'll be good for making lasagna. Um, so I got that seasoning in the oven right now and i also got my grill grate which i showed you outside that i'm going to season also last night i got all the rust off of that i got a nice back and black so i'm going to put a good seasoning on that so what i'm doing today is i had a pot which i had posted on my instagram and this pot i picked up at an antique store it was totally rusted it had some pits on it I totally restored it. I almost got it to the point where it's black now. And it's pretty much more or less this um, bronze gray color like this cast iron. So I've got a feeling it's made out of the same type of iron materials and went through the same type of uh, 
seasoning and manufacturing as opposed to say your real black ones. That one, because of its age and restoration, I'm having trouble putting a good seasoning on it. I cannot get it to the point that I need it. So I have seen where if you want to put a good seasoning on it, cook a batch of potatoes in it because the starch actually helps. So what I'm doing today is I'm making home fries. Um, I'm in the kitchen, going to make home fries and I'll show you what I've got going on. Okay, so since the pan is in the oven, the top of my stove actually gets hot when I run the oven. So what I'm doing is I got my coconut oil already in here. It's starting to melt down to its liquid state. Uh, probably got about um, less than 20 minutes left on the seasoning. And then I'm gonna use this. I went ahead, used the chopper. This thing here is wonderful. Basically, the way this works is it comes with two different size blades depending on what you're cooking up. Um, my wife uses the smaller one for a potato salad. This bigger one is awesome for making hash browns. And then you put your sliced potato there and then you just go ahead and close this down on it. Um, if you have hand trouble, you might want to pound it. Do not do like my mother-in-law. She actually hurt her hand. She put a whole potato in there and tried slamming it down. Now you need to slice the potatoes and put it in there. This thing is wonderful because once you take the blades out, you are left with perfectly cubed potatoes. So I'm gonna season these up. The oil that I'm using today that's actually melting down um, and getting ready is actually just regular coconut oil it's one of the healthiest oils for you to eat it's also great as a skin moisturizer um, i have another video that i'm going to be putting out about making my own moisturizer from this and it's just really good um, this i've used to season my cast iron pans they came out great while it's okay to cook in this this is crisco pure vegetable oil. You want to season your cast iron pans mostly with um, some type of vegetable oil like coconut, um, grapeseed, or flax. But I've seen YouTube videos where they use this Crisco vegetable oil. I do not suggest it. You can cook with it, but I do not suggest it for seasoning. And the reason why is it left my pans totally sticky. I had to go ahead, um, wipe out all the oil, and then recoat them with the coconut oil and reseason them that way. So, like I said, this might be good for um, cooking, but not for seasoning your pan. So that's why I'm actually going to go ahead and use the coconut oil, which is much more healthier for you. And this pan's actually being stubborn about taking a seasoning. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and cook a batch of potatoes, like a couple of YouTubers have suggested. Hopefully that helps the process. So let me go ahead and um, prepare the cubes with the seasoning that I'm gonna put on it. Unfortunately, I do not have any onion powder. I am out of onion powder. So I've gotta to get to the store and stock up on my spices. So let me go ahead and get these all seasoned up. And also one thing I wanna mention is a couple of YouTubers have said that you can actually use metal utensils on your cast iron. I say that with a caveat because if your pan is properly seasoned, it's okay. Just beware that you might scrape some of that seasoning off and scratch your pans. Most people prefer to use the silicone or some type of plastic. Problem with that is it can leach um, plastic into your foods over time. So best thing to use on your cast iron is actually some type of wood. You can get these at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, you can get these various supermarkets, Walmart. I do not suggest buying these at Kohl's though. Reason being is they sell the Food Network brand. Nothing wrong with that, but one of these, a wooden spoon, went for $17 the last time I was in Kohl's. I do not suggest shopping there. Get your wooden spoons out of um, Dollar Tree, Walmart, Target, wherever you can find them cheaply. If you're handy enough and into bushcrafting, which 
I may attempt to do during the summer. I don't know. You can actually make one out of wood yourself. So, you know, just saying don't spend a lot of money. So let's get these potatoes seasoned up. Alrighty, so I got my bowl here. Gonna go ahead, dump my potatoes in. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt. Now, if you notice, I'm not measuring. This is all to taste, um, depending on, on your taste. Go ahead and get that all nice and mixed up in there. Oops, lost one. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of black pepper. Get that all mixed up in there. And then up here in New England, we use celery salt a lot. So, and actually, if I can grow some celery, I'm going to try dehydrating it and making it myself. And actually, I got a batch of celery in the fridge that might be on this verge of being its last days. So, I want to take a look at that and possibly dry and powder that myself. I'm going to add just a touch of Italian seasoning on top. And definitely got to use garlic. Garlic is one of the best things for you. So I got garlic powder here. You know, that's one thing. If you're stocking your kitchen or your pantries, when you go into the store, always provision for buying spices. It just helps your food so much. Uh, you can add spices to soups. You can add them to basically any recipe, your steaks, your other meats, your other vegetables and it just helps so much with the taste so we got those all seasoned up so my timer just went off and that means my big cast iron pan has spent its hour in the oven with the oil getting all seasoned up all right let me take this out And this is what this big boy looks like. This right here is my cast iron turkey pan. Had to go set that down because that is hot. That's my cast iron turkey pan, lasagna pan, and um, pizza pan. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my potatoes. So I got these frying up on the stove top right now. I'll go ahead, give them a few more minutes. They smell good though. Let's see how these are doing. They've been frying up in here for quite a while. Try one out. Mm. Oh yeah. Those are done. Nice and seasoned. Not quite um, all that crispy like like fries or something you would get cooking on a griddle top or a skillet but that's good i'm gonna go ahead and um plate these up and have myself some breakfast as you can see in there nice and boiling normally i would go ahead and um paper towel these off but i am out of paper towel today well bon appetit as they say Mmm, these are good. Probably would have liked them a little more crispier. If you're wondering why there hasn't been any hiking videos lately, it's basically because it's springtime in New England. And what that means is we have a lot of rain and wind this time of year. Everything is just slippery mud. And you don't want to be out in the woods when there's a lot of wind going on because branches will come down and that's just not good. Matter of fact, I was out fishing the other day on an open lake and a rather large sized branch just fell for absolutely no reason at all. Um, it wasn't even windy that day. So right now I'm in the kitchen. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I've got some celery that's going to be going bad. I don't want to talk about what's going on in um, our nation right now. It's, it's not the purpose of my channel, but everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows about the supply chain issues, prices of things and everything. So 
taking a stance where nothing is going to waste. I compost most everything I can. So what I'm going to do today is I do not have a dehydrator or a food saver. Um, it's something I'm looking into. It's just finances right now for that just don't actually coincide. And especially the fact that my channel is not at the point of being monetized yet. So what I'm doing right now is I've got some celery. This is just a bag of grocery store celery. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have the butt end on it that I can actually plant it and regrow the leaves. This is not really going that bad yet but it's from a dish that my wife had made her potato salad um, they didn't have the smaller bags they only had the bigger bags so it's getting to the point where um, it's going to start going bad shortly the ends are already starting to get a little bit dried and white on it so before it goes totally bad what i'm going to do is i'm going to dehydrate these and i am going to make celery powder out of it and for those of us up here in new england we love our celery salt we put celery salt on hot dogs different dishes and everything i'm just going to make celery powder i'm not going to mix salt with it i'm trying to cut back on my salt content I'm a little bit early in this video you saw i made potatoes and they just came out a little bit salty because i added salt plus the celery salt so this is going to be just a regular celery powder i'm going to do these in my oven this is not a vegetable that you want to do in your microwave the reason being is is also very high in iron and minerals if you try to buy, dry this in your microwave like I've shown that I do my herbs and other greens this will spark like crazy and cause a fire in your microwave so do not dry these in your microwave oven um, your, your dehydrator uh, solar dehydrator which is something I'm going to be making I'm just trying to procure the materials right now. I'm trying to do everything as cheap, minimalistic, um, cost-wise as possible. Um, that's just because prices have gone absolutely crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop this celery up into very small pieces. You can see I just got a regular baking dish. I'm cutting these up into very small pieces so that they can go ahead and dry quicker as opposed to a whole stick and i'm just laying them out on my baking sheet and i also got a bowl here nothing is going to go to waste these ends that i have to cut off because they're getting um, past prime they're going to go in separately in this bowl and they're going to be put in my composter so i'm going to go ahead finish getting these all cut up nice and small onto my baking sheet I'm going to try to leave as much space in between them as possible so that the sides can dry out because you're destroying the cell content. It will actually cause them to shrink, which is great for making powders. I'm not in a position where I can get a freeze dryer. I've looked into them. The freeze dryers are super expensive. You're talking three to $6,000 depending on the size that you you get and the size of the machine and the weight of the machine is just something that I do not have the space for. Dehydrating is going to be my method and you know it's really not that bad to me. I mean yeah I might lose some mineral content, might lose some vitamin content but here's my take on it. And whatever I'm preparing I like to add a lot of seasoning and spices and the price of spices lately you're talking a little bottle about this big upwards of ten dollars now it used to be before you could get your spices between one and uh three dollars but your mccormick's at um this one particular supermarket and that's the other thing with prices they have been all over the place depending on where you go where you shop if it wasn't for the gas prices fluctuating so much and starting to climb back up even though they come down i would probably um go around to different places shopping because and prices right now are just they're going up everywhere but they're literally all over the place so looks like i got my cookie sheet kind of full so what i want to do now is i want to set my oven on the lowest setting so i'm going to go ahead bake and i'm going to take the temperature way way down because i don't want to cook them i just want to dehydrate them so the lowest my oven will go is 170, um, which is a little bit high for drying herbs and vegetables. You'll have to actually keep an eye on them because 170 is more or less what you want to start drying your 
your meat at 170 to around 180 degrees. Um, typically, if you're going to be drying vegetables and herbs, you want them like right around the 125 to 130. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on these. And to make the process quicker, I'm going to go ahead and stick these in while my oven is preheating. And I'm going to place these on the bottom rack to make maximum use of the heat as possible. So probably going to want to check them every half hour. So we'll be back with you. Um, hey everyone, we're back in the kitchen. So it's been about nine hours that these have been drying in my oven at about 175, 180 degrees. That's typical of what you will find of a dehydrator if you were to get it. So let's take them out and take a look at what we got. It looks like my celery is all done. It's all nice and crispy. You don't want it bendy, you want it crispy. Because if they're still bendy, that means it has moisture still in it. But these are all nice and crispy. And if you notice on this side, um, I had an onion that was getting ready to kind of go bad, um, but I didn't want to waste it. So I went ahead and chopped that up and I put it on here. Onion is getting pretty much done itself. Um, that's going to need a little bit, just a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and process the celery and I'll put the onion back in. Now normally what you can do is you can go ahead and um, dry these on different racks in your dehydrator. Since they were getting kind of small, I just decided to go ahead and do this on this one cookie sheet. So we got all our celery pieces off, all nice and crunchy. And you can see how much they actually shrivel down. So now, just got my onions left, I'm going to go ahead and spread them out so they get a little more heat to them. I'm going to pop those back in because those are not quite ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my blender today. Just just use a small cup rather than doing it by hand just for the sakes of time. Typically if you were in an off-grid situation you would be pounding these with a with a pestle and mortar. But I'm just going to go ahead and pop them into my blender. And I'm going to put it on low speed and I'm actually just going to use the grind. Go ahead, shake it up a little bit. Now, if you can see in there, we have a celery powder. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to reuse the spice jar here and go get a uh, funnel so I can pour this. Filled up my spice jar right to there. So now I've got celery powder that I can use for different dishes. Okay, so the process for doing your onions are pretty much just the same. I'm not going to go ahead and uh, record that, but I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, same process to make my onion powder. So that's going to do it for this video um, of homesteading and rural living, um, building a fire pit, using your spices and um, some of the other different things that we have covered. So we'll see you in the next video. This is Scott Hervey with Scott Hervey Outdoors.